Nutrition can be very confusing sometimes, but it really doesn't have to be. Between what we see on TV to what we might read on the internet, or even information we get from our healthcare providers. This just usually leaves us even more confused than when we started. Let's just bring it back to the basics and simplify nutrition to make it a little bit more understandable so that you can make healthy decisions. Knowledge is power. So in order to improve our health and be successful with weight loss surgery, we first have to understand these basics of nutrition. So once you know more about the foods you eat and how they affect your body, it really will help you both before and after weight loss surgery. Why is food so important? Well, it affects almost everything that we do. It affects how we look, how we feel, and it even affects how well we function each day. Let's start with a few definitions. Nutrients are substances in food that the body needs to function properly. Nutrition is how the body uses these nutrients. So nutrition is also how or why people eat. We can break down nutrients into six different categories, carbohydrates, fats, proteins, vitamins, minerals, and water. Some nutrients actually provide calories and energy that our body uses. We know these as carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. Vitamins, minerals, and water don't provide calories or energy, but they're very important for our normal body functions. Calories are the amount of energy found in food. So you can see from this photo, an apple has about 50 calories, whereas a donut has about 350 calories. We need calories to walk, to blink, to pump our blood through our body. Any body function requires calories. Like I mentioned previously, calories come from carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. Let's break down each one of these components, starting with carbohydrates. Everyone needs carbohydrates, and sometimes they get a bad rap. Carbohydrates are the sugars and starches that are found in food, and there are two types of carbohydrates, simple and complex. Simple carbohydrates, so when you think simple, think easy. Simple carbohydrates are easy for the body to digest and process. Simple carbs are found in most processed foods, desserts, and sweetened beverages. These types of sugars provide quick energy for the body. However, if these carbs aren't needed, they're usually quickly stored as body fat. Complex carbohydrates, on the other hand, these usually take longer for the body to break down and provide energy to the body over a longer period of time. So some examples would be beans, fruits, vegetables, and whole grains. Here are some examples of simple carbohydrates. You can see donuts, candy, pop, sweets, desserts. We typically recommend avoiding these. They're very high in sugar and oftentimes very, very highly processed. Complex carbohydrates, on the other hand, are foods that we do want to incorporate into our diet. That includes sweet potatoes, beans, oatmeal, fruits, and veggies. All of these are full of fiber and tons of vitamins and minerals that our body needs. Let's talk about fats next. Fats are crucial for normal body function, and most people think that avoiding fat altogether is the best route, but really it's important to choose healthy fats. Fats are required to carry many vitamins and minerals throughout the body. They also give food a lot of flavor, but consumption of fat should be closely monitored. Fats are highest in calorie, and a little goes a long way. There are two different types of fats, saturated fats versus unsaturated fats. Saturated fats, think S is in saturated, is solid. Saturated fats are typically solid at room temperature. So for example, butter or other animal fats. A diet high in saturated fats can lead to an increased risk of heart disease, obesity, and some types of cancers. Unsaturated fats are usually liquid at room temperature. So olive oil, peanut oil, avocado oil, Unsaturated fats are considered the healthy fats, and they're important to include as part of a very healthy diet. Here are some other foods that are high in saturated fats. Red meat, cream, mayo, skin on poultry, 
French fries, palm oil, and ice cream. Again, we want to limit these to avoid any health conditions that they might be associated with. These are some foods that are high in the unsaturated fats. So these would be considered healthy fats. Avocados, olives, seeds, olive oil, fish, nuts, and nut butter. It's really important to know though that healthy fats are not free. So they still contain calories. So too many healthy fats can prevent weight loss. Just because it's healthy doesn't mean you should eat too much of it. So for example, this might look like one tablespoon of peanut butter, but it's actually closer to two. This small portion is roughly 200 calories and it's very, very easy to eat. So is it healthy? Yes. But is it high in calorie? Yes. The next nutrient we're going to discuss is protein. Protein is essential for building and maintaining muscle and skin, healing body tissues, making hormones, and so many other important functions. In the bariatric program, we focus so much on protein and we always recommend eating it first. And why? Well, because protein keeps people full. Protein also takes longer for the body to break down. So therefore it keeps people fuller for a longer period of time. And we always recommend choosing the leanest source of protein. So you might be asking, well, what is a lean protein? Lean protein means it's something that is lower in fat, it's particularly those saturated fats that we had talked about earlier. So here are some examples. We have skinless chicken breast, low fat dairy, lean meat, fish. These are all awesome options for protein. There are also options for meatless protein sources. So I mentioned earlier Greek yogurt, but beans, edamame, seeds, peanut butter, almonds, eggs, these are also great sources of protein. Many bariatric patients rely on protein powders and supplements, especially to get in enough protein that the body needs. And these supplements are required both before and after bariatric surgery and usually are needed for the first one to two months after surgery in order to meet those protein goals every day. Like we said before, protein is also not free, so it still does have calories. So again, just because it's healthy doesn't mean you should eat too much. Now that we've talked about the nutrients that give our body calories and energy, let's talk about the nutrients that our body needs that don't necessarily provide calories, but they are required for normal body functions. So vitamins and minerals. Vitamins play a very important role in our body and overall health, but our body doesn't make vitamins. So it's important that we eat a wide array of colors to ensure we're consuming the necessary amounts of vitamins that our body needs. Minerals are compounds found naturally in foods that we eat. So similar to vitamins, it's important that we eat a large variety of foods to make sure that we're getting a good variety of these minerals. So some example minerals would be sodium, calcium, iron, phosphorus, potassium, magnesium, zinc, copper. Our body needs all of these minerals. Since we need vitamins and minerals to survive, we can't go deficient in them. So after weight loss surgery, you are at an increased risk of a vitamin mineral deficiency. So that's why we stress the importance of taking supplements for the rest of your life. Let's talk about water. Water is found everywhere in the human body and water carries nutrients throughout our body and it's responsible for digesting food, removing waste and also regulating our body temperature. Dehydration, which I'm sure everyone has heard the term. So people lose water every day when we breathe, sweat, or when we use the bathroom. We also lose small amounts of electrolytes that help with normal body functions. If we lose too much water, our bodies may become out of balance or dehydrated. Water is the best option to stay hydrated, but there are other alternatives that offer a little bit more flavor because water sometimes also can be boring. So all of these images that you see here are no calories, no bubbles, and no caffeine. So while water is the best option, you also can try some of these to spice things up. The most important point when it comes to water or fluid or hydration is you really want to avoid sugary beverages. You don't want to drink your calories and oftentimes these beverages don't really help people to feel full. 
So if you can see in this image here, these are some example beverages that have quite a bit of sugar in them. Another important point in this photo is you can see that a lot of people think juice would be a healthy alternative to pop, when really oftentimes it actually has more sugar in it than pop would. So really it's trying to limit your fluids to water or to other sugar-free options. Now that we've broken down the different nutrients that our body needs, this is what our plates should look like and how we should set them up. Half of the plate being some sort of lean protein and making sure that we eat that first. A little less than half of the plate being vegetables. So green beans, broccoli, spinach, cucumbers, a lot of non-starchy vegetables. And then just the sliver there left for some starchy vegetables like white potatoes, sweet potatoes, corn, and peas. Obviously, we have a side dish for some fruit and then a lot of hydration too. One of the most confusing things about nutrition is the nutrition facts label. So let's break it down. In order to read a nutrition label, we first need to understand what to look for and what we can ignore. We also need to understand the ingredient list and how to read it. And then finally, with knowing that information, we can then make the best, most educated conclusion about a certain food product. So first off, what are we going to look for? First and foremost, we need to know what the serving size is. All of the values on the label are based on one serving size. So you can see here the serving size is two thirds of a cup and there are eight servings in the whole container. Next would be calories. So in one of the servings, so in two thirds of a cup, there is about 230 calories. And again, calories are the energy that food provides. Extra calories or extra energy will be stored as fat. Next, let's take a look at saturated fat and trans fat. You want to aim for less than 18 grams per day of saturated fat and always look for zero grams of trans fat. Sodium. The goal for sodium is less than 2,400 milligrams per day. If you have hypertension or high blood pressure, you would want to aim for less than 1,500 milligrams of sodium per day. Next are sugars. So you always wanna choose food products that have no added sugar or are written sugar-free. Sugars can be kind of confusing because oftentimes it's hard to tell how much sugar should be acceptable for a certain food product. The reason it might be confusing to read a label and try to figure out the sugar content is because there are naturally occurring sugars. Naturally occurring sugars are found in milk and in fruit. So let's take this example here. This is a Greek yogurt. So on the label, it shows that the sugar amount is nine grams. But if we scroll down to the actual ingredient list, the only ingredient in here is skim milk and active cultures, which are also probiotics. So the nine grams of sugar are the naturally occurring sugars that are found in milk. Naturally occurring sugars are acceptable for the bariatric lifestyle. What we are most concerned about are the added sugars. So let's take this example. This is a granola bar, a very popular granola bar that has seven grams of sugar. So when we just look at that, it's hard to tell. Is it a sugar that's added to the product or is it a naturally occurring sugar? So let's check the ingredient list. So here highlighted are multiple forms of sugar that are added to this granola bar. So definitely something we would want to avoid. Just to reiterate that we really want to avoid as many added sugars as possible. So that's why it's important to read the ingredient list and try to decipher where they might be adding in extra sugars. There are many ways that companies add sugar in, and oftentimes they use different types of sugars that you might not necessarily know are sugar. So here's a list of some other names for sugar that could be added to food. You can screenshot or pause the video and take a look at some of these, but for example, corn sweetener, dehydrated cane juice, dextrose, glucose, rice syrup, sorghum syrup. A lot of these aren't common names that we would typically know, but these are all different forms of sugar that are added to many different types of food. At the bottom, you'll see one exception to the rule. So earlier I had talked about naturally occurring sugars. 
Naturally occurring sugars in fruit and dairy are called fructose and lactose. So these are better tolerated than added sugars and some sugar alcohols. For those who have gastric bypass surgery, people typically do not experience dumping syndrome when they consume fructose and lactose, but sometimes experience dumping syndrome with some of these other sugars listed above. Food companies often market and advertise certain foods as being healthy or being nutritious or improving your health in some capacity. But you have to be a little bit of a detective and don't fall for misleading nutrition claims. We're going to talk about a few of them. You might recognize some of these labels. And a lot of times if you look at the label, you might automatically assume that that food product is healthy because it says fat-free or because it says gluten-free, and that's not always the case. Here's an example of a misleading food label. This is also a popular uh, protein bar that many people like, so take a look at this. So the label claims it has fiber, has protein, so you might automatically be thinking, wow, this must be very healthy for me. Let's take a closer look at the nutrition facts label. We see that there are 7 grams of sugar and 7 grams of protein, and it's advertised as a protein bar, and frankly, 7 grams is very low for a protein bar. There is a good amount of fiber, but just not enough protein. So to figure out if those 7 grams of sugar are added sugar or naturally occurring sugar, let's move over to the ingredient list. So pop quiz time. So pause the video and read through this ingredient list and try to figure out how many added sugars you think are added to this healthy protein fiber bar. There are six. There are six added sugars that are put into this bar, and that's probably why they taste so good. But when it comes down to health, it's not the healthiest option. And it can be misleading for you to think that it's full of protein when it's really full of sugar. Let's play a game of Mythbusters and go over some common myths about quote unquote healthy foods or foods that are marketed as healthy but might not be. So myth number one, gluten free always means healthy. Unfortunately not. So unless you have celiac disease or a sensitivity to gluten, choosing a gluten-free option does not always mean it's a healthier option. Gluten-free bread is still high in carbohydrates, similar to regular bread. Myth number two, as long as the food has protein in it, I can eat as much as I want. Unfortunately, no, this is a myth. Protein still has calories and is not free. Myth number three, juice is better than pop or soda. Unfortunately, this is a myth as well. So juice may contain a few vitamins. The sugar content is very similar to soda. Myth number four, if something is marketed as sugar-free, that means it's also calorie-free. No, that's not true either. Foods that are labeled sugar-free might not have sugar in them, but they always still have calories. Here's a great example. On the left, we have sugar-free Hershey's chocolate, and then on the right, we have regular Hershey's chocolate. So you might look at the label and think, oh, it's sugar-free. It must be healthier. But if we really break it down and take a look at the nutrition facts label, the calories are very similar, fat content is very similar, and the carbohydrate content is pretty similar. While the one on the left might not have sugar, they still have very similar calories. So this is why you really want to be a detective when looking at the labels and don't let food marketing companies steer you one way or the other. Lastly, let's talk about weight loss in a simplistic term. In regards to bariatric surgery, we all know it's just a tool and it's not a quick fix. So with bariatric surgery and a healthy, balanced diet, that's what leads to improved health over time. The science of weight loss can be very confusing. And like we mentioned at the very beginning of this presentation, there is so much information in the world about weight loss and diets and fad diets and losing weight with certain medications. But it really comes down to three very important things. 
sleep, exercise, and nutrition. So as far as sleep goes, many people don't realize the importance of sleep and its role in health. So more than one third of U.S. adults are not getting enough sleep every night. The goal is seven to nine hours. When we don't get enough sleep, we increase the risk for high blood pressure, heart disease, and stroke. As far as sleep in regards to weight, if someone is sleep deprived, they're more likely going to have an increased sense of hunger, increased eating opportunities because they're awake for more hours, increased tiredness, so maybe making poorer food choices. And this all leads to increased calorie intake, reduction in the amount of energy you're burning, which ultimately can impact weight. The second very important component when it comes to weight loss or weight maintenance is regular exercise can help you lose weight, but also it can help reduce stress. Exercise can reduce the risk of heart disease, diabetes, obesity, and more. There are two different types of exercise. It's important to exercise your heart and your muscle. So to exercise your heart, that would be cardio type exercises, walking, jogging, running, dancing, cycling, getting that heart rate pumping. To build muscle would be resistance training or weight training. So using free weights, resistance bands, or assisted weight machines. A really great quote when it comes to diet and exercise and weight loss is you can't outrun a bad diet. So while exercise is super important, diet typically moves the scale in regards to weight loss. So in this chart here, we can see um, foods that are typically higher in calories and can be eaten in a quick amount of time. So two slices of pizza is 560 calories and can probably be eaten in five to 10 minutes, but it would take 65 minutes of moderate cycling to burn off the calories from that meal. And so it's important to know that diet is what moves the scale. This is a very good image that depicts that. Weight loss is about 80% diet and 20% exercise. In this whole presentation, we've talked quite a bit about nutrition as far as carbs, proteins, fats, vitamins, minerals, and overall health. But there's a very simple way to think about nutrition, and that is forward foods versus backwards foods. So before you eat something, ask yourself, is this food helping me move forward to better health or backward to feeling unhealthy and depleted? Lastly, with weight loss or with bariatric surgery or even any drastic life changes, we often think about what we have to give up. And I love this quote because it's very, it's very important. And a healthy lifestyle isn't about what you lose. It's about what you gain. And I think that's really, really important. And at least it resonated with me. So I hope this information was helpful. If you ever have questions, always feel free to contact our program.